This is the high window from Sinead Morrissey's Parallax. Honey, you've requested a Raymond Chandler spin-off, a spoof in style, but from the blonde's perspective. Let's say the secretary and the one about the coin called a brash of the bloom, gone missing from a Pasadena mansion. We're in this thing together. Busier than a PI who never simply talks, but utters wisecracks like a jeweler stringing pearls. Happier too, more stranded in domestic detail. But hell, tonight I've drawn the blinds, clicked on the tasseled lamp, unplugged the telephone, set out two highballs, and before the children cry upstairs, pulled you down beside me by your tie. So I say, it's like this. Some guy walks into the office with an unlit cigarette, wearing unimpressed like a drape cut jacket, and looks her over. He looks everything over. Plants, ashtrays, furniture, with a languid, expert eye. The type of man who gives a girl offence by offering advice about her gloves or hair or makeup uninvited. He knows too much about guns and broads and books and chess, the likelier scenarios, which kind of hurts his soul and which kind of makes him smooth and cool and powerful. Our glasses clink, then you say, a-okay, but what's with her? And I don't know. Witchery in the garden room, for sure. Towering flexes pressed against the pane, an alcoholic mistress and a life so narrow, probably from the outset. It's pathetic little batch of dull effects could fit inside one suitcase, which is not her fault. And you know what? Maybe hair pulled taut against her head and a simple linen dress, so weird he notes it twice, is just her choice. The whiskey seeps its spiced and easy heat along our spines. The house is oddly quiet and I'm suddenly adrift in how the road to Idle Valley dips and curves towards its secret. A thousand lighted windows on the hill, a moon so sharp its shadows look cut out with an engraving tool, and Marlowe in his car escaping the patrol. Now kiss me.